We're going to go in five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Mr. Chairman, before the public hearing, I'd like to make uh, an off-the-record announcement. Is that okay? I want to. Yeah, I'm retiring. Just show what a good friend Barry Knott is to me for years. Uh, it was his birthday recently, and he's always been interested in big-time bow and arrows, hunting bow and arrows. So I bought him one. In return, he bought me a sweatshirt with the target on the back. find my I just lost my paperwork that's not a good start. here it is here it is okay. <laughs> good evening this is Harold Watson zoning chair of the Stratford Zoning Commission that now sits for its regular public hearing and administrative meeting for 2024 on Wednesday April 24th at 6 p.m. quorum for this meeting is four and I will now call on the following elected commissioners zone one commissioner Linda Manos Zone 2 Commissioner Ewald Joseph. Here. Zone 3 Commissioner myself, Harold Watson, here. Zone 4 Commissioner Deborah Lamberti. Here. And Zone 5 Commissioner Len Petricelli. Here. 
Uh, alt alternates in attendance tonight include Dave Fuller. We also welcome Jay Havansky, our planning and zoning administrator, Gail DeCilio, our recording secretary, and at some point, I'm sure, uh, Pat Sullivan, our legal counsel. The public may only speak at the invitation of the chair during both administrative and public hearings. With that said, I call to order this monthly session of the Stratford Zoning Commission at 6 p.m. All in favor? Aye. Please note that Pat walked in. We will now move on to our public hearing portion. Before I be begin, I have an etiquette post. We're now going to go to the first on our public hearing list. Will someone read it? Yep. Yes. Well, I just wanted to read it into the record so we know, and then oh, okay. one of us will just say withdrawn. Is this been removed for just tonight or permanent? No, it's permanent, I believe. This item has been withdrawn from consideration. All right, move that we strike it from the agenda. Okay. All in favor? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Deborah, can you take that? Five hundred sniffins lane. Petition of Five hundred sniffins lane. Petition of the landing strip LLC, seeking special case approval to construct a six thousand foot square foot marine service building and shipyard in a WF zone. Good evening, ladies, uh, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> members of the commission. My name is Barry Knott. I'm a lawyer for the firm of Knott, Knott and Dunn with offices at 1656 Main Street, Stratford. I'm here on behalf of the Landing Strip LLC uh, seeking special case approval for a marine service facility at 500 Cut Spring Road. Now, this is the third month, twice already. I'm not going to do it again tonight. Uh, the reason why it, it took three, uh, three ups at bat is because when we were here the first time, Jay had just received input from DEEP regarding our coastal area management application. And that input indicated that there were violations of DEP rules and regulations at this site. So the hearing was, con uh, uh, <coughs> excuse me, continued from that night to the next month so that we could get that issue resolved. That issue has been resolved. Jay's been in touch with uh, deep, and that is no longer an issue. When we got to the, the, the following month's public hearing, we determined in the interim that we needed a variance from the Board of Zoning Appeals because of the FEMA flood elevation. I had applied for a variance prior to last month's Zoning Commission public hearing. The hearing was not until April 5th, after last month's public hearing, so we continued the application one more month till tonight so that I could get the ZBA application approved. I'm handing Mr. Joseph a copy of the ZBA approval letter. You can see from looking at this exhibit yeah, you have this, right? that I recorded it in the land records as required by state statute. So accordingly, all documentation, all uh, uh, technicalities regarding this application has now been resolved in our favor. We went to Harbor Management, we went to Architectural Review Board, we've gone to ZBA, and now we're here. Uh, so I just ask for your approval tonight uh, of this application, it's a 6,000 square foot marina on a 60,000 square foot piece of property on the river next to what is now known as Grill 520, I think, formerly known as Knapp's Landing Restaurant down at the end of Sniffins Lane, a perfect location for this water dependent use. Thank you. May I ask a question? Yeah. Did you hear back from any of the state coastal people? Have you gotten any report? Did they? Yeah, we did. Jay, Jay got it. Jay got a, Jay. a report. And they were okay? Yeah. Because it's a. That's where the issue of the violations came up. Okay. Right. So you're squared we're, we're away good, with them. We're good with them. So we really are ready to move forward. Right. That's right. Uh, that's, that's correct. I can confirm. Do you want to fill us in where we are? And, and there's not much more. We received this information about two months ago when the applicant first presented and they asked for some time to go and try to resolve the issue. I've got an email from Sue Jacobson from Deep confirming that that issue uh, has been 
or at least the applicant can resolve the issue now by, re by removing, I don't know what they call derelict structure, it's a right. piling, I think, that was put in without a permit, and the applicant now has the opportunity to resolve that issue. So as far as we're concerned, uh, deep, that, that was Deep's major concern for the site, which appears now uh, that the applicant can, can resolve the issue. I reading back through everything, and I it was two different, three different piles of things that I had from you. Uh, ARB was asking that you do some enhancements on the building. Did any of that make it into where we are now? The, 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 they they made minimal enhancements, and they were incorporated into the last architectural rendering that I submitted to the commission. Okay, I the only I. This is an instance where I actually will disagree with the ARB in that they want you to put a six-foot fence all the way around there. But if we, because it's in a coastal zone, a flood zone, that actually would end up being a problem. We're going, we were going to do that anyway. You're not doing it. For, we are doing it for security purposes. I'm, oh, okay. I was going to say. We're going to have boat and boat equipment on this property. So. Okay. And we're going to, well, have, if boat, we're going to have boats tied up to the dock, waiting if, service. If the state says you can do it. Yes, then, okay. The only other thing that I saw in there is the ARB asked that there be as, as much planting as possible along the uh, consistent, stippen, stippen. Consistent with that request, we submitted a landscape plan to you. You've got a landscape plan in the file that incorporates the requested landscaping. Thank you. Those are the only yeah. two things that I had. Anybody, anybody with any questions? Thank you very much. I also looked up, this goes back all the way to 2014 POCD. If you look at what the planning was, this is right. not, this has been planned well, for that spot. It makes sense, right? It makes sense. For two decades. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Is there anybody here who would like to speak in favor? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. And thank you, Attorney Knott, too. Um, just really quickly, just to follow up on the POCD, it actually kind of touches two POCDs, the 2014 POCD and the recently adopted one. And that's, that's kind of, um, I'm not saying it's, it's etched in stone, Ten Commandments of the Town, per se, but it's a guide we should follow. So I just want, just for public consumption, um, one of the things that's really important to a POCD, both the 2014 and the recent one, is opening up the waterfront and opening up the water space for, for public enjoyment and for other, or other uses too. Could you just very briefly speak to how that opens up the, um, the coastline for, um, along well, the Housatonic? That, that would be true, Dave, if we were seeking to put a restaurant there or housing of some kind where, where, where our use is encroaching into a water-dependent use. That would be true. However, here we've got a marina mm. on the water, and the marina needs to be secured. So unlike the boardwalks that we would be putting in front of a restaurant project or a hotel project, in order to provide public access to the water on a non-water dependent use at a water dependent site, this type of use does not call for that kind of public access because we have to secure this property because of the valuable equipment that's going to be stored on it from time I guess, to time. I guess I'll take the step, a step back from kind of the broader POCD concept is to really just open up water space use, whether there's security purposes or open boardwalks. It, it's, is it fair to say that a 60, 60 plus boat slip arena does help open up the Stratford water flood? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. pretty much yeah. kind of what the POC is really no trying point. to now, you get at thematically. If you, if you think about it, this is the only marina, except for the one on Housatonic Avenue where my guy's operating out of now, that is gonna be available for marine service facilities in the town of Stratford. There are no others. There's this one and there's the one on Housatonic Avenue. We got nine miles of waterfront in this town. You would think there would be more marinas Actually, that, I, that I would be Actually, I wanna amend the nine miles. It's actually 18 once you consider both Long Island Sound and Housatonic River from, oh. uh, so we do, we have as much, miles. we have as much coastline as the state of New Hampshire, for wow. lack of a better term. Um, so it's, it's interesting to see that just more diversified use yeah. coming to the waterfront. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.
All of Casey's uh, notes have been incorporated into our site plan, landscaping plan, and will be incorporated into our construction drawings. Because, because my client's builder has been working with both Brian Donovan and John Casey in resolving the site plan issues relating to this property. Exactly, M MS4, MS4, but it, it's a little more involved than just MS, the typical MS4, because this property is contaminated. So as part of our deal, we have to remediate the contamination on file uh, on the site to the satisfaction of DEEP. And in that regard, there's going to be a cap put on the site as it currently exists to DEP standards with clean fill going on top and all that kind of stuff. No. 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 Thank you. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Yes, and I would say that if the commission decides that they're going to vote favorably upon this, they would attach a condition that the applicant complies with all the recommendation in John Casey's memo dated July 18th, 2024. And we're good with that. Okay. Right, thank you. Do we have the ALB recommendations? No, I don't see them here. They are attached to the back of my staff comments. Oh, okay. Okay. And um, <clears throat> Jay went through, you went through all the recommendations, okay? To the best of my knowledge, yes. And so, you know, typically we'll condition that they need to comply with the Architectural Review Board's recommendations, the town engineers, uh, recommendations as well as my recommended conditions of approval uh, in addition to those and those are all on page two of my staff comments but to my knowledge they they have they've complied okay thank you Anybody like to speak in favor of this project? Hearing none, is there anybody who would like to speak in opposition to this project? In opposition to this project. Hearing none. Move that we close the public portion of Sniffins Lane. Thank you, Lenny. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Sorry. Next one. Thank you. Len, do you want to do one? I could. Oh, Len, do it fast. Let's go. Tax amendment, petition of Com Link seeking to create a new <clears throat> 29 title Majestic Place District MPD to allow for the construction of 47 unit affordable housing development with 37 units will be in a CA zone. 520 Success Avenue, petition of Com Link seeking a change of zone from CA to MPD. And again, 520 Success Avenue, petition of Com Link seeking site plan review to construct a 47 affordable housing development of which 37 units will be in Stratford per se into 830G of the COS and the CA MPD zone. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm attorney Stephen Bellis and I represent uh, Comlink Inc. 
And uh, I already made my presentation to you all about the um, uh, 830G application that we filed. Um, I have a couple handouts, and I'll be very quick tonight uh, to, conclude the, to conclude the public hearing. Um, the two exhibits I'm going to pass around are, are just going to the end, Exhibit 10 and Exhibit 11. Um, and I'll, let me just pass them out to everybody, and then I'll be briefly just talking about it. May I approach? These are both majestic, though, right? Wow. These both are concerned with success. He might be short now because yeah. he doesn't have one well, for Jay unless you already gave one to Jay. I, uh, I have two tens here. Oh, give one. Oh, you got an extra? I have an extra. Did I give you an 11? Okay, so the last time uh, we were here, there was an issue um, about uh, parking. So I just wanted to go over that briefly. Um, in Exhibit 8, which I already submitted, there was a deed um, that was sent to um, uh, uh, file both in Bridgeport and in Stratford. And, I ha and so Exhibit 8 you already have. And what that deed did was it took parking that we were utilizing um, from Success Village and the applicant actually purchased that. So that's part of the application now. So I'll have our engineer show you that. So those spaces are part of the application. So you're legally joining those properties, essentially. Yeah, yes. So the deed is there. And then in Exhibit 11, I just got an opinion of the council who did that, um, who did that transaction, Attorney John Breich. And he says that uh, he did it, it uh, that Success Village was a pre-existing um, um, structure before the zoning in 1945 that you guys instituted. I think Success Village was built in 1943. So it's a pre-existing structure and it still complies even if it weren't with the 10 foot setback. So there's no violation by um, filing that deed uh, for Success Village. So that's a good thing. Uh, exhibit, so the parking is now part of this project. I just wanna make that 100% clear. I'll have the engineer come up and show you, but it's not being rented, it's not being leased, it's not an easement, it's part of the project. Um, the second thing was, um, when I, uh, I had given you last time, was um, a revised text amendment, which was exhibit number four. And I, uh, when I filed my application, I originally uh, had made a submission of, um, I guess it was 37 units in Stratford. Uh, and, and some in Bridgeport, and then Jay wrote me a letter and I reduced it. So um, I reduced it to 32 units in Stratford, and uh, there was always eight in Bridgeport. So this commission is deciding 32 uh, units in Stratford. Uh, apparently it was submitted to the Planning Commission and they got the old um, application that had more units and none of the new parking. So when they voted unfavorably based on that old information, not what I've given you. I thought that was inappropriate and told them so. I said, why don't you just wait and look at the new information? And they said, no, uh, we'll just make an unfavorable report. I said, fine, it doesn't matter anyway, because uh, when you have regular zoning under 8-3, regular zoning, 
Uh, if there's a zone change application, it has to go to planning. We all know that. Um, but under 830G, it doesn't go to planning. And the reason it doesn't go to the planning commission is because the planning commission only decides one thing when you send something to them for a, a zone change. Does it conform to the plan of development? Well, it doesn't matter uh, because in an 830G, that's not the standard. They almost never comply with the plan of development. So the courts have always said, it doesn't matter if it complies with the plan of development or not. It's whether it was substantial health and safety issues that are outweighed by uh, the need for public uh, affordable housing. So sending it there is, in my opinion, a waste of time because it doesn't have anything to do with your decision. Your decision is, does this project, uh, do we need affordable housing in this town? I think, and the answer is yes, because you're below the 10% threshold. Um, I think we can stipulate to that. Uh, and secondly, that um, are there any safety or health concerns? That's what you have to worry about, not whether it's consistent or inconsistent with the uh, town plan of development. So um, having said that, I wrote you a little memo. It's a legal memo. You don't have to read it. I've already explained it. So where are we? Uh, I will have the engineer show you just so you know what the project is um, that we are now including that parking. He will tell you, I believe that there are 43 spaces on site in Stratford for the um, 32 uh, apartments that are in Stratford. Uh, as you all know, this building is the same building that's been there for, I don't know, many, many years. Uh, the footprint of the building's not really changing. What is changing is it's getting remodeled and it's going up so that uh, whatever the building was there before is going to be what the building is there now. Um, there's no open space uh, in this particular project because there's no open space now anyway. There's parking, but there's no, no open space. Um, so I think that was why we left a, or this meeting open. Um, I just want to remind the commission this, this was part of a global settlement. I talked to Kevin Kelly again today. Uh, he said he understands that we're going forward. He just wanted me to make perfectly clear to everybody that it's 32 units that are in Stratford. And so the 30% of that would be the affordable units. And if my math's right, that would be like nine point something, but you can't do a nine point something. So it would be 10 affordable units. I round, you round up. That will be in? Yep, in Stratford. Yep, that's how it works. And that's, he agreed with me, that's how you do the math, and that's how you do it. Um, so I said, okay. So I, I did tell you. <laughs> um, let me just get the engineer to show you what I'm talking about uh, so everyone's on the same page. Um, do you have the... This is Chris DeAngelis, he spoke last time. Um, Good evening, my name is Chris DeAngelis, a uh, professional engineer with the basis of DeAngelis. Our office is in Bridgeport. And um, the, the old property line, the original property line, I'm just going to mark it here the red pen so you can see, kind of cut east to west across the site. <clears throat> and everything below that, this kind of long linear strip here, was either leased area or uh, I think it was a combination of lease or uh, easement area for parking that had been added on over the years. So this area now, this area of Bridgeport, this is the town line, Bridgeport on the left-hand side, Bridgeport on the right. Uh, so this area uh, is now part of this property, Bridgeport, and this other triangular area here is now part of this uh, large L-shaped parcel in Stratford. Um, so what that did is it changed the zoning table a little bit. We have more land now to work with. And all these parking spaces um, that were along this southern boundary are now uh, part of the property. Um, so I've revised the table, the parking summary calculation. 
Um, it's actually, uh, Attorney Bellis had mentioned 43 spaces available in Stratford. It's actually 48. Uh, it's 43, 43 is a new requirement for the majestic oh, zone. So we set the requirement a little bit lower than, than the actual number we provided on the plan. And I just did that because my experience tells me we tend to lose spaces when we get into the detailed mechanical, especially with electrical. There's probably gonna be a transformer on the site somewhere. Maybe the garbage dumpster gets a little bigger or recycling bins are added. We tend to lose a space or two when we, when we start going further into the design. At this stage with zoning, it's always <coughs> good to have a couple extra parking spaces in our back pocket. But we come very close to the um, to your actual zoning regulations regarding parking spaces. Um, May I interrupt you one second? Does that increase the green space? It stayed about the same. It was 85 previously, and it's still 85. The area that we added is mostly, um, you can see there's just some green space in the corner, but it was mostly parking area, so it didn't bring down the ratio much. It's still at 85 percent. Impervious. We set the standard for the majestic zone at 90. I think that's what you had before. That's what we had before. <laughs> it stayed the same, so there was not there was no, no appreciable change. Um, the other changes since the last time I uh, spoke here uh, had to do with drainage. I don't know if you want me to go into the detail, but we did provide a, a drainage report responding to John Casey's comments. The drainage report's um, written in the style that we would submit to Bridgeport because the water ultimately flows into, into Bridgeport. Their let me, requirements. Let me stop you one second. Our M4 is the same as Bridgeport? No. Jay? I mean, I think they, they, they require to follow the same standards, but our MS4 is our permit that we hold, I'm sorry, that we uh, apply to the state of Connecticut with. And Bridgeport has its own MS4. And certain so very large be, projects have their own MS4. They essentially have to meet both towns' requirements. They have to meet the state requirement for, for the state MS4 requirements. Okay. Right. And we did put the uh, calculations that John Casey likes on the plans as regarding the directly connected impervious area and water quality uh, volume calculations. Those are now updated on the plan. Um, he had some other comments regarding the catch basins, which we've incorporated. So that's, that's it. Um, if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. Questions, anybody? Yeah, we, we just got this drainage study tonight. Yes. Um, and it's for Bridgeport and Stratford. So Correct, yes. We haven't had a chance to. Yeah, I know. It's thick it. because Bridgeport has very specific requirements and they want to see all that backup data. Um, Stratford's requirements are, are much, much simpler. They're typically just shown on the plan itself. I don't know that that's true. But yes, yes. So, for example, uh, Stratford's requirements are basically to capture the first 1.3 inches of water quality volume. Bridgeport goes much further than that. They have you for a residential development of the size uh, capture and, and uh, uh, meet the existing flow for up to the 50 year storm. So we look at, at minus 10%. So we look at the existing flows for the, all the storms up to the 50 year storm. And then we have to design our system to hold back all the excess generated from the excess impervious area plus 10%. That's very restrictive. Most towns would say just get at or below the existing. Bridgeport says you got to get under the bar by 10%. I wrote those regulations 20 years ago <laughs> for Bridgeport. And I've been dealing with them ever Here since. <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. DeAngelis, so just to make sure that we're understanding this correctly, Bridgeport has a higher standard for, for the drainage. Yes. And yes. that's being applied to the whole property, the Stratford and the Bridgeport side. Th that's correct. So actually it has a higher standard than what even our codes speak to. Yes. Okay, th those, thank those you. I just wanted to make sure that was, that was clear in the, in the record. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Anybody else?
I don't know if you would be the one person to ask it, but in some of the, there were some questions asked about, is this a 100% residential building or is there still going to be some kind of other use spaces left in this building? It's a 100% residential. So there is no, there's no storage anymore. There's no. no, there's no reason for anything other than the parking that we've applied yep. for the residences. There won't be any no. strain on that. You are correct. Okay. Yes. Follow up. Is is it, is it why you want to um, to change change down the zone to M F M P uh, M P G because there's no commercial anymore there. There's no storage. The, if I understand your question correctly, um, on an 830G application, I have to write a text amendment um, and provide it to your commission. It's, it's a draft text amendment. And we call it the Majestic Place District, I think. Well, yeah, Majestic Place District, whatever. Yeah, and that, so if this project were to be approved, those are the, those are the regulations that in the future someone would look at and say, what did this board do? And uh, okay, they approve for, I, I was wrong. I said 43 spaces, maybe it was 48, right? The, the building height, whatever the, whatever's on that text amendment. Yeah. But the text amendment only applies to Success Avenue. Yes. Right. Oh yes, just. Yeah, it's not town wide. It's oh, absolutely. It's for that absolutely particular piece limited of property. to this right. piece of property <coughs> defined, and I put by the legal description, just this. Not even Success Avenue, just this piece of property. Yeah, yeah, good, good point. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, just, sir. Just for clarification, unless state statutes have changed very, very recently, there's nothing that requires the applicant to submit a text amendment and a zone change. All they have to do is submit a site plan review for an 8-30G. Now, many, I think, many developers decide they want to do a three-part application, text amendment, zone change, and site plan review, because their project then complies with all the reg requirements for the zone they have proposed, making it, there's a variety of reasons, one being financing, you're able to, it's easier to finance a project when it 100% complies. But to my knowledge, there's no, unless something has been Yeah, they did amend recently, it, Jay. Very recently? Uh, they amended it saying you had to give them a draft regular, a draft text amendment. <coughs> draft text amendment and, and a zone change application. And they didn't say zone change, which was odd, right? But yeah. Yeah, that's they, what it says. They gave you a, they want us to give you a draft text amendment. Yeah. I mean, and there's been virtually no discussion about that, you know, so that yeah. would be news to me. Yeah. I don't know. That's been approved at the state legislature? Yeah, it's been it around been for, it's been around for a little while. It's under section, subsection G. I know it's. I would certainly like some time to review that, yeah. just to make sure. I mean, yeah, but that's why we, we get give enough it. of these that come in that I want to make sure I'm giving you the right advice. Yeah, uh, that would be news to me. Well, w you are right. We did for many years do it for the exact same reason that you just cited. But then I just I can point out to you in the statute. Uh, subsection. I think it was subsection G. A G of what? Of of eight thirty, G. There's a, a little. There's a G in parentheses. Yeah. Yeah, I think, if I remember right, I, I'd have to dig it up. Yeah. Harold, you got a chance, Commissioner Fuller? Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So um, to kind of go on what, uh, what uh, Mr. Hebansky and Attorney Sullivan were saying, too, I've, we've, I've seen some uh, affordable housing 830G applications throughout my time as a full, full bird commissioner. Um, and you would see these, what we would call triplicate applications, the, the text amendment, the application for a zone change and the actual site plan. Um, and that was before the legislative changes in the General Assembly. Um, my question is either both to, to our staff or, or to the petitioner. Um, before we, we could deny the text amendment and still approve or deny the site plan, and the text amendment didn't really have a bearing on the site plan, is there a change in the legislation that, that affects that, so if we deny the text amendment, does that in any way impact um, our ability to approve or deny or stipulate with approvals, approvals with stipulations, that site plan? Yeah, I, I could take a stab at it. Um, Are you asking that, the applicant uh, or staff? Who could, who could I'll that. let the applicant go first. Yeah, yeah. So under 830G, um, 
the, uh, as long as it's not industrial land, you can approve a site plan that is not consistent with what that zone is. You know that. So, um, and, I'm, I, and I'm excluding industrial land because that's not, not the case. Uh, so um, that's generally what this commission is asked to do. And it can do that um, uh, as long as the commission doesn't find any substantial uh, health and safety factors, right? Um, I was just pointing out to uh, Jay that they have this requirement that we send in a draft text amendment. Why they have us do that, I'm not, I, I think the reason is, like what Jay explained, um, we do it to have a zone change so that everyone knows that this project um, not only was approved by a judge if it had to get appealed or by your commission, but then down the road, why was this site approved and it's not conforming? So that's why we put in the text amendment. It, 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 your commission knows because you just acted on it, but 25 years from now, they're going to be like, well, what did they do, you know? <laughs> yeah, so that's why we do it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Sherman? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> if um, my, this question is for both of you. I don't, want, I don't mean to be a pain, but for you and, and Jay, if denying it or approving it will not make a difference, why changing it? Uh, I, I, I never said that applying it uh, by approving it or denying it won't no, make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Denying it or approving it will not make a difference. The text amendment, yeah. So I'm, I'm looking at the statute oh, it's, okay. and, and a 30 g parentheses g. I'm not saying anything about a draft regulation. And then in your memo to the commission, you have a 30 g small parentheses small b parentheses. Oh, one check there B. then, Pat. Yeah. I can't remember. I, you know, I'm trying to do it off the top of my head. No, I, th I, I want you to approve the text amendment, the zone change, and the um, site plan as revised with the latest site plan. No, I, you just need more and time. And that's why it matters yeah. that this gets referred to the Planning Commission because, as the applicant knows, when you have a, even though the, the 8 30G component of this project, requires a site plan review, any text amendment, especially when you have a separate planning and zoning commission like Stratford does, when you, they're combined, you make the finding as to whether or not the text amendment and the zone change are consistent. I haven't seen this regulation that the applicant is, is talking about, but um, you know that's what, the, that's what the process is for any text amendment, any zone change, it gets referred to the state of Connecticut, gets referred to the regional planning agency. And it, I, I mean, I'm looking up the section here. I, I'm not finding it on the Connecticut general statute. So I would love to be educated if I'm missing that. That's an important thing for me to know. What, the planning commission? No, for oh, one, the draft that, text. that it's now a requirement to submit a text amendment. And two, that it doesn't matter that they give a, ref that the referral is a waste of time or not required. Any text amendment, any zone change requires review from the yeah. planning body, and in this case, it's the planning commission the, separate from the The reason law. it doesn't apply, Jay, is because the only reason uh, a zone change or text amendment goes to the planning commission is by state statute, right? And state statute is 8-3. This is not an 8-3 application. It's just not. So we are an 8-30G <laughs> application. That's the difference. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. I'm now reading B1. It says, any person filing an affordable housing application with the commission shall submit, as part of the application, an affordability plan, which shall include at least the following. Designation of person, entity, or agency that will be responsible for the duration of the affordability restrictions for the administration of the affordability plan and in compliance with the income limits yep. and sales price or rental restrictions of this chapter. B, an affirmative fair housing marketing plan governing the sale or rental of all dwelling units. C, a sample calculation of the maximum sales price or rents of the intended affordable dwelling units. D, a description of the projected sequence in which, within a set-aside development, the affordable dwelling units will be built and offered for occupancy 
and the general location of such units within the proposed development and E, draft zoning regulations, conditions of approval. Stop right there, draft zoning regulations. Okay, I, well, I'm not gonna stop, but yes, oh, okay. That's it. Draft zoning, okay. Yeah. So, conditions of approval, deeds, restrictive covenants of lease provisions that will govern the affordable dwelling units. Yeah, the draft zoning regulations. Okay, but you gotta do, give all the rest too. Okay. Okay, so I mean like, if you. That's why we do a text amendment. It says you have to do draft zoning regulations and in this. Yeah, that's what I did. It's a text amendment, yeah. So it is in there. It's been there. I, I, so Jay's I would right. say this, the Zoop Planning Commission is well within their right to review this text amendment and zone change for consistency with the plan of conservation and development. The applicant is certainly within their right to disagree. I, yeah, we respectfully disagree, which is fine. Uh, Jay, in your uh, Planning Commission staff report, maybe that, maybe that, that is what I'm reading here on page I believe that was by the town planner, Two. Smitha Toda. She has a list of 12 items, 15 items, that are proposed text language items, or she, 13 items. She had the old application, though, Mr. Chair. She didn't have the new one. That was the problem. But did we ever have the new one? Yeah, you have it. It's Exhibit 4. So what she had in her old application response we have addressed all of those comfortably for you? I think you should have the applicant go through those items then let them, they can let you all know which ones they've satisfied and which ones they haven't. So I'm, in, I'm on page two then. I'm on, on. I'll read quickly. Regarding 29.1.8, uh, this section needs to be clear about what is trying to be said. What is the purpose of this regulation? Purpose is for an affordable housing project on this site. Regarding 29.1.9, the word draft should be elim uh, eliminated. It's a model deed restriction in land use. That's the way I wrote it. I don't have the word draft. You what? I don't use that word in the new one. So this is gone? Yeah. Okay. Regarding 29.1.10, the application is chosen. Brass Rail LLC is the entity responsible for administration and compliance with the project. It should be clear that the town expects a qualified independent firm to be selected as the applicant's owner, at the applicant's owner's expense to verify all affordable units and potential tenants qualify for residence. How is the proposed administration qualified to manage the administration and compliance of the affordability plan submitted? A list of qualified affordability managers, which has been provided by the uh, Connecticut Department of Housing, can be obtained in the Stratford Office of Planning and Zoning. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem using that. That's not what the state statute says. The statute just says name an administrator. That's her opinion. But I have no problem uh -huh. using the list Okay. Yeah, if, if that helps you. Have you, so. I, I, I've never been provided the list, so I don't know who they are. But I, we don't, that's not objectionable. Regarding, Jay, are you making notes on these? Regarding 29.4, the language stating an MPD shall be located on a lot with 25,000 square feet should be eliminated as it adds confusion. Yeah, it did add confusion, I eliminated it. Okay, the second sentence is in this section should remain. Regarding 25, 29.5, an allowed structural structure land use for the site is a ground floor sober home, halfway house, or group home. Is it part of the 830G development, or are these market rate units, or are they separate altogether? The applicant should verify if a group home can have deed restrictions, 830G units with it. The applicant will need state of Connecticut Sign off verifying the first floor home, halfway house, or uh, group home complies with all state requirements. Yeah, I, I, I put um, halfway house or group home with uh, state of Connecticut approval, so I, I adopted that. Regarding uh, 29.6, the language regarding density needs to be revised 
as it is confusing. Yes, and she's correct. I revised that to show that, and I was trying to make that between clear. Between Stratford and Yeah, there's 32 okay. units. Yeah, 32. Okay. Regarding 29.7, based on the provided zone development table in the text amendment, there appears to be no minimum maximum for height or building setbacks. And I think in the newest thing, there- I listed them all. I there's it, like, it, there's it, like it, 10 of them. They're all yes. listed, yeah. And I they're, saw They're them. on the site plan, yeah. Um, the only development restrictions provided are the maximum lot size, yeah, width, that's, and depth. that's old, yeah. So that, this is very old. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna skip down to the next one. Can you <clears throat> gonna go over uh, 29.5, please? No, 29.6, again. Can I go to number six? 29.6. The density. The density is 32 units. 29.6. Yeah. 6, yeah. That's the density. density. There are 32 units in Stratford. Well, this one said 37. Yes, that's why I changed it. There should be a new exhibit four, right, Jay, that I submitted to you? Yeah. yeah. That Maybe the commission doesn't have it, I don't know. No, the commission has it. I think what they're asking you is oh. to explain which ones, how you've addressed Yeah, yeah, I'm them. doing it. Okay, I just want to make sure, yeah. Yeah, he said I've he didn't have it. out in all the packets, yes. Oh, okay, yeah, it should be 32, sir. I'm sorry, I, I tried to go through these and look through all of your documentation to see what you would actually Yeah, no, you can ask me, I'm not, it doesn't bother me. Regarding, I'm, gonna, I'm at number eight. Regarding 29.8.2, the project would require a variance of its own regulation for parking, as the town requires nine, nine feet by 20 feet parking spaces, and the site plan proposes nine by 18 I feet I corrected parking. that, yeah. So it's now tw back to 20? No, nope, nine by 18. Nine. And that works with us? Okay. Um, number nine, regarding 29.9, the project is proposing 56 parking spaces, which has changed, correct? Yeah. However, 22 spaces, 13 spaces in Stratford are on an abutting property. This whole thing should go because- Yeah, yeah. I, I've tried to clarify that now by saying that we've purchased that land and yeah. And that land is gonna be joined. So there will no ever, there will never be any development yeah. other than parking on that land. Yeah. Yes, okay. sir. Um, number 10. Regarding 2910.2, the title of this section should be revised to Building Plans Required. I didn't understand that, to be quite honest. Jay? I called it, uh, Jay, I called it Application for Zone Change Approval. I'm sorry, I believe 2029.10.2 oh, uses two. the word preliminary. Oh, to yes. See fully developed plans is essentially what my recommendation was. Oh, yeah, these are fully developed. Uh, uh, I, yeah, these are fully developed site plans, yes. Uh, so, the, so the title should be changed to reflect that, not preliminary. Regarding 2911. The, well, the building plans are, you know, Jay, you know, the, they're not construction drawings. Well, here we're also talking about the text amendment, so it should be, yeah. it's going to be a text amendment. It should not be. <laughs> yeah. You don't give tentative. construction drawings. You give preliminary building plans. Yeah. Well, we determine what comes in, not the actual. Yeah. Right. Uh, I'm going to uh, on number twenty nine eleven point one. The phase at all should be removed. Um, and regarding twenty nine point twelve, staff is unsure of the phrasing of standards of site plan approval. I think I changed that. Jay and I went over that. I think it's clearer now. So that that, that also yeah, it's is been clarified. It's been clarified. Okay. Yeah. Regarding 2913, the applicant proposes that a project within the MPD is exempt from the prohibition of development activities within 50 feet of freshwater. I that whole thing is gone. I deleted that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Affordable housing. Um, yeah. I think that's it. Yeah, I think I addressed everything that they wanted. Jay, is there anything else that I would be remiss not bringing up? No, I, I think uh, since you've gone down each one of those items one by one, you've heard from the applicant which ones they've satisfied, which ones they've looked at but maybe decided not to modify, I think you've heard those and you can make that decision as to whether or not yeah. you're satisfied or you want further changes. The conclusion of this report said, after a full review of this application, it appears as though the proposed application is incomplete and generally inconsistent with the land use and environmental objectives 
identified in the POCD. Is that still a true statement? Or do you think they've come yeah. close? I think they've come substantially closer with the rev revisions that they made. And I think if, you know, we're not going to make them go back to the Planning Commission for an, a review, although that would be, would have been nice that the Planning Commission got this most recent text amendment. They probably, they may have, would have, I would assume they likely would have had a more favorable recommendation. But they looked at the very first version. So yeah, that's, I, I think, think that's that for the happened. most part, Mr. Chairman, they've satisfied that. And I'm just going to ask one question of our council. Is there anything that we're missing here that you need, that we need to discuss or? I, I don't have any additional comments. I mean, I, I don't think that you need a text amendment. I don't think that you need a text amendment in order to have an H-30G, but, you know, that would require, um, you know, some research in terms of what Attorney Bellis is saying. And um, well, since, since we're spending a small fortune and a lot of time on rewriting all of our zoning, Jay, does this help or hinder our simplification of zoning in Stratford? Well, I think the most recent version is, is, on the, is back on the right track. And so, you know, whether or not it needs a text amendment or zone change or does not, I think based on the modifications, they are far closer to consistent than their original text amendment uh, application. Any, anybody else with any, any comments or questions? Well, thank you very much. I well, I have to do, oh. why do I have to have a yeah. comment? Is there anybody oh. here who would like to speak in favor of this project? For a second time? Anybody want to speak in favor? Hearing none? Anybody want to speak in opposition? I just see familiar faces. Anybody want to speak in opposition? Hearing none? I move that we close the public portion of Comlink for the Majestic Place District to allow for construction. Second. The, I got to let me do them all. Petition of Comlink for zone change and the petition of Comlink for site plan review. Close all three for public portion. Second. Okay. So, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Did you have a question? Did I miss you? To clarify things, do a roll call in the future. I can't do that. Sorry. <laughs> I was just instructed to move fast, and I'm trying. Okay, I lost my paperwork again. All right, I'll do the next one to keep things moving. Modify Go. Bluebird Prestige versus Town of Stratford Zoning Commission, FBT CV 19, Jesus Christ, 606 6724 SAC 45300 170 Ornork Lane, Attorney Bellis. Yes. I have more homework assignments, may I approach? I'm attorney Stephen Bellis, and I represent um, uh, Bluebird Prestige on 170 Orinoke Lane. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'll go through these exhibits rather quickly. I just wanted to make sure you had them. 
and uh, explain what we're doing here. Uh, so let me back up for a second and start by saying uh, way back when we had a global settlement agreement um, with the town uh, dealing with many properties. This was one of them and this commission approved uh, 170 or an Oak Lane for 11 units. Uh, my reason for coming here today is to um, uh, clarify that the uh, 11 units that we want that were approved would all be three bedroom units as opposed to some two bedrooms and some three bedrooms. That, so that's why I'm back here, okay? So I'll be quick. Um, Number one is notice of hearing. I've given notice, certified mail um, to uh, everybody, and that's what number one, sh number one tells you. So that's easy. Uh, number two is, the big, is a portion of the large settlement agreement that we had, and I'm gonna refer you, I'm, I'm not gonna ask you to read the thing, I'm just gonna refer you to page number um, uh, six. And uh, on page number six, you'll see 170 Oran Oak Lane. Um, and originally, when this settlement agreement was drafted, the town and the applicant had agreed that there would be 20 units uh, at 170 Oran Oak Lane. I'm just giving you a history. So that's what was agreed upon by the town of Stratford and the developer. 18 of them were at fair market value and two of them were affordable. Okay. Um, when we came to your commission, that didn't happen. Uh, there weren't uh, 20 approved, only 11 were approved. So we drafted a, what we call first modification that go to exhibit number three. And exhibit number three uh, is the first modification. And if you look um, on that particular document, it says that they had contemplated 20, but now we only got 11. So 11 unit development at one sub was approved, and it was approved on January 11th, 2023. The reason I'm showing you these documents are we're talking about units. We're not talking about bedrooms, just units. And units are a word I'll get to in a minute. It's used in the state statutes. A unit is called a dwelling unit. Sometimes you guys call it a single family residence. So uh, on the first modification allowed 11 single family developments or dwelling units. Uh, exhibit number four is the state statute that I'm referring to. One of the, they define different words uh, under this particular one, 47-A1, this is an exhibit four. Dwelling unit means any house or building which is occupied or to be occupied, rented or whatever as a home or residents of one or more persons. So that's the definition of a unit or dwelling unit. It doesn't mention bedrooms. Sim similarly, uh, single family under K means any structure used as a single dwelling unit, it shares walls, has its own heat and hot water, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't say anything about bedrooms. Uh, number five was the approved site plan uh, when I came before you. Uh, as part of the settlement that you approved way back when. So I wanted to make sure you saw the layout, the cul-de-sac and the houses. Uh, exhibit six is the modified one, the one that we're seeking now. And you will see that it looks the same. It's the cul-de-sac, same number of units, same location, um, except for it now says three bedrooms to make it perfectly clear on all of the 11 units. So that's, that's the reason I'm here. Um, for the, uh, I did an exhibit seven. Uh, those, are the those are the floor plans and elevations that, that were submitted uh, to show you that all we're doing is converting a den into a bedroom. Um, so the house is the same, the, the, the way it looks, uh, is the same, the floor plan's the same. Uh, and so, as you, you, you may or may not know, a bedroom requires you to have a closet in it and a door, whereas a den doesn't. Um, so it's the same footprint, but um, 
Instead of calling it a den, we want to call it a bedroom. Um, exhibit 8 was a drainage report that was prepared by Pat Rose's office, um, and that was update, updated uh, after these plans were developed. Uh, I spoke with uh, Kevin Kelly. He's the town attorney um, uh, for, the, uh, city of, uh, for the town of Stratford. And I told him we were coming here and we were going to ask for this. And um, he and I uh, literally at, I don't know, maybe it was like 5.30, came to an agreement. The town uh, said that it would support this application. Um, we were going to do a new modification or a third modification um, to the agreement. Um, just like I read. Can I stop you? Modification that goes where? For who? Uh, between um, the applicant and the town of Stratford. And then are you taking it back to the court? To um, Kevin and I talked about that, and we agreed that there was no need to take it back to court as long as we had a written modification agreement signed by both sides. Uh, so, uh, and the reason for that um, is that the uh, settlement agreements were introduced into the uh, settlement agreement that the court signed off on, and, and that's why I gave them to you. It doesn't say anywhere in there about bedrooms. You could look at what I just handed you. It doesn't say there were going to be X number of three bedrooms, X number of two bedrooms. It just said initially 20 units, and then later it says 11 units. But Mr. Bellis, you understand. Yeah. Part of our job is to do is to know what's happening on these properties. Yeah. Oh, well, that's why the I'm trying to explain it. The idea of adding nine extra bedrooms means nine extra cars. Yeah. It has repercussions for our decision making. Yeah. So don't don't belittle that. That's something oh, that's really important. Oh, I'm not really belittling it. I'm just saying that it, what, why we don't have to go back to court. That's okay. All. That I, was why I, I went back and that. I read the court the court ruling, and they said you're absolutely perfectly fine walking back into court if you're in agreement to simply file it and say here it is. Yeah. So, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. So you're saying that the town does not have a problem now with the three bedrooms. No, they do not. So if it's approved, you don't go back to court. It's a done deal. That's, and we yeah. get the tax dollars for three bedrooms instead of two. That's, that's okay, my thank understanding. You. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions, anybody? I'm still having, I'm still having a problem with, uh, with the den that you name a bedroom now. There's no closet. How could it be a bedroom if there's no There will be. They're yeah. adding closets. We want to add a closet. You add a closet. Yes, sir, and a door. Sorry, I missed that. Oh, oh, oh my apologies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> believe it or not, that's that's what it boils down to, a closet. We're fighting over a closet. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, he's right. And before, are we, yes. Uh, thank you, Attorney Bellis. Uh, so just, just to clarify once again, like, like in the previous hearing yeah, that we've seen, um, there's no fundamental change to the footprint of the property. This is really to define a den to a bedroom, which is the closet, the door. Um, it, why did it come back to here? And is that part of the structured agreement that a new modification has to go to the zoning uh, for a public hearing? Yeah. Um, yes, that's a good point. I missed it, so I'm glad you brought it up. In the settlement, in the settlement agreement, the second modification, there's a sentence that says that the zoning commission retains jurisdiction. Okay, and and that was based on yeah, I guess that was when in the, the second uh, former market. Supreme Court justice came in and kind yeah. of arbitrated that whole deal, and that was what yeah. was agreed upon. Kevin wrote that into the second modification agreement. Um, uh, I think he had it in his first modification agreement too that your commission retains jurisdiction. So I have to come back to this commission. And again, to there's there's really no fundamental change in the land use, the no. footprint, none of none no, of no. that sort of heavy bill. No, it's a bedroom it's a it's a bedroom issue. And so that would presumably also increase the property value or the tax assessment of those units as well, since they are going to presumably three bedrooms. I would assume that the tax assessor will increase I, I don't know that for certain, but it'd be my in my experience he will find the three bedrooms We'll more probably, valuable. We'll tax them more than a two-bedroom, but I don't. I, I, I don't know that. I, I just assume he'll do that, or she. I don't know. Well, who it is. rule of thumb, as opposed to. Yeah, rule of thumb would be that uh, a three-bedroom colonial would be uh, taxed more than a two-bedroom condo unit. But, but 
Thank you, Attorney Bowes, and th thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. So the town will now get the benefit of selling the house. Not the, no. the developer will sell a house for three bedroom, and the town will then reap the tax benefits as a three bedroom as opposed to a two. Yeah, as soon as it's built, I think that under our state law, they, the, they come out and assess the value of that home. And so it starts on day one that the town gets its tax money, even before a sale. So um, our grand list will increase. Grand list will increase. Thank you. That's, that's the word I was looking for. I'm going to read one paragraph. Unless, do you, have, do you want to say something? Yeah. Deborah, you want to say something? I'm going to read one paragraph, and I'd like our council to respond. From a, from a procedural standpoint, the commission may choose to inquire with the town attorney if the applicant has resolved the prior reason for the denial, and two, as to whether the commission has the authority to amend the subject application without first amending the settlement agreement. Are you reading from now? Yeah, yeah. I am reading from uh, the April 12th Zoning Commission Planning Staff Review. There's another paragraph. So, so just to clarify, as the town attorney reads it, that was the reason for the denial last, maybe it was a month or two ago, the last time this application was here, is that Attorney Kelly felt that procedurally yeah, the changed. process was incorrect. I have yet to hear any that that has been rectified to this point. I just want to make sure that's on the record. Okay. If we're moving ahead tonight on on whatever we have, however we decide. Anything that we should be concerned uh, it was, with? It was my understanding that somebody from Attorney Kelly's office was going to be here. So uh, I don't know whether that's, oh, you are here. Oh, okay. So could you, um, maybe we could hear from. Yeah, could you mind, Mr. Bellis, do you mind if she comes and reads? No, not It at sounds all. like she I, has the agreement that you were talking about. Uh, no, I only dealt with Attorney Kelly at 5.30, then hopped in my car. Well, I know he. I don't even know if he talked to her. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Uh, but sure, you can say. Attorney Kelly is stuck in Hartford on his <laughs> with his other duties. Should yeah. I have right. heard? Well, well, why don't we let the applicant? We can take Attorney Bellis's word. Okay. I don't think he's trying to bamboozle us. What? No, there's no bamboozling. I put it in an email to Kevin. <laughs> I sent an email. We have to draft the agreement, obviously. If he is bamboozling us, we'll get him next time. Yeah. Um, okay, if everybody's comfortable that the statement if exists, it just doesn't exist in this room yet. I'm okay, I'll move forward. I just, I wanna be done. <laughs> Are we okay? Is that okay? Can we? My recommendation is that we let the applicant finish, and if there's a representative here from Attorney Kelly's office that wishes to speak, okay, I have no problem with and that. And then we make that determination at that. All point. right. Yeah. I just she yeah. could be the opposition or I, I have nothing else favor. to say. You have nothing else to say. I think they had that discussion. I saw them talking to each other. Come. Good evening, everybody. I'm Attorney Kristen Minow. I work with uh, Attorney Kevin Kelly over at Kevin Kelly Associates at 25. Your, your name again? I'm sorry. Sure, Attorney Kristen Minow. Can you spell that? Oh yes. Yeah. So it's a uh, M E N N I L L O. First name Kristen K R I S T E N. So Attorney Kelly made me aware of that just um, moments ago before this meeting that the town and the developer came up with a tentative agreement. Uh, but we would like to have some time in order to formalize that agreement formally in writing. Um, so in connection with that, we are looking to see if the commission could postpone the decision for about two weeks. So this way we can formalize that agreement and put that in place. We don't, we meet in four weeks from now, but. Yeah. <laughs> so with the, so with the town attorney, the attorney representing the town is asking is that you continue this item so that the actual agreement can be put into place so that they can they may not come to an agreement formally I think okay. well we can approve it based upon thank you very much I appreciate it 
Never, we'll close it, and then I'll say something. Uh, is there anybody well, we got to leave it open, or should we close it? I'll let Attorney uh, Sullivan weigh in. It sounds like the app, uh, Attorney Kelly would like it to remain open so that they can enter the, they can revise the agreement. Can't we, can't we? Now, just one second, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to clarify. Okay. Do we need to leave the public hearing open or can we close it and supplement the modified agreement into the record if the application is closed? Is that a staff? Typically, staff reports, staff correspondences can go to the commission uh, after the application has closed or new testimony from, from staff. I think the most prudent my recommendation is you leave it open so that there is no question that you have left something important out of the decision. But I'll let uh, our town attorney weigh in. I agree. I've, I've been very careful, and I know through all this global settlement agreement that I represent the commission and Attorney Kelly represents the town. So, um, you know, that's um, the town, it's the town, the commissions retain all their jurisdiction. The town made an agreement, global settlement agreement, with the parties. So it's really an agreement between the town and Attorney Bellis' client. So, you know. So could we, I'm going to just say this, it's not reality, could we conditionally approve or disapprove it based on the outcome of that? It, it sounds like from what Attorney Bellis is saying and what the representative of Attorney Kelly's office is saying is that they have reached an agreement in principle. They just don't have it in writing yet. Um, I think the prudent thing to do would be to leave it open for that agreement to be resolved. But no. I mean, that, yes. that would be the prudent thing to do. Why can't we just approve it and then let them work it out and then we're done with it? Yeah, but the decision rests with us, so we can approve it, and if there's an issue between them and the town, then they can deal with it. But Lenny, so, we've, we've thought this was a done deal on several occasions so far. But, I'm, but this has come before us continually. Let's just get it off our agenda and let them work it out. Once we approve it, they'll decide what they want to do. Disagree. Disagree. Leave it open. Leave it open. What? Leave it open. I can't. I don't know. What, what are you saying? I said to leave it open. Leave it open? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm just a little flummoxed that the town's representation uh, wouldn't entertain some sort of either written response or, like, they knew this a hearing was happening. I mean, it, it's, it, it's like... Uh, it's the day, the day of the exam to say I didn't study. You know, it, it's, I'm, I'm just, we're asking volunteer commissioners to rule on this, and, and they're not prepared. It, it, that's what it looks like. Um, my question procedurally is could it be, could the public hearing be closed, but the administrative session left open for that agreement or for like documentation to be submitted to the zoning commission for it to, to adjudicate in the administrative session? I, I don't think so. I think we'd have to do that in a public hearing. I could be wrong. If the commission is willing to grant me a grant of five minute recess, I would be happy to try to make the call so that you have clear direction one way or the other. I'm happy to do that. It's up to you all. Yeah, I will, we're going to declare five minute recess for what kind of break, whatever you want to go do, but be back here in five minutes. Granted. It's 7.15.
problem is then we're creating essentially an issue between the, the town lawyers and ourselves, the zoning commission. So we can't, we can't say, we'll say yes if this unspoken or unknown goes through, right? Because what if, what if they end up, what if it falls apart, which it's done several times? It's crazy. It's crazy. It is crazy. Is he lying? It's not a legal case. It's legal. Okay, it's 7.19, we're gonna come back in session, I believe, as soon as Jay walks up here. All right, thank you, everyone. Are we back in? We are back in okay. session, unless so, we have to call uh, ourselves in. Attorney Kelly said that we, the, if the commission chooses, they are welcome to close the public hearing, but that uh, he requests that you leave it open while the, I'm sorry, table it and not vote until the agreement has been finalized. Uh, the applicant also handed me a document which I will just pass around. You may want to just explain what this, what this yeah. is. It looks like some sort of real estate market analysis. Yeah, I had the realtor here talking about three bedrooms yeah. versus two bedrooms. Yeah. Oh, thank you. My kind of nerdiness. Other than that, I have nothing else. Meant that the applicant handed to me for the record. Thank you. I appreciate this. Oh. Would, would you would you make copies of that? Oh, do I? I think everybody got them. No, he just he just the guy just handed it well, in. You're lucky. No, <laughs> I think he he hit the bottom of this pile. Oh yeah, you're more important than anybody. That's what he said. We, we, we remember these things. So, you've said all you wanna say. I'm gonna open it up if there's anybody who wants to object. Say it a second time, anybody who wants to raise an objection? Anybody who wants to speak in support? Hearing none. Close the public portion of Modern Bluebird, Bluebird Prestige for the 17th time. Second.
Oh, oh, thanks. All right. So the next one we have is that's it. Move to close the public hearing. Someone second it. I did. All in favor? Aye. 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 So it's four five zero. Could I just make sure that that marker is down on the back of the file? Yeah. Here, take this one. I give it back. Oh. I got it. Oh, I want to read it though. If you'll sit. Okay, so we're now going to go to our work items. Thank you, guys. Good night. Thank you. Good night, Nick. Why are you here? Well, this is. I had to put a suit on to sit here with a big chunk. Well, I see you. Good to see you. Yeah, you Good look very you. spring. Okay, tax amendment going down the list. Going down the list, tax amended. First one is withdrawn. 500 Smith and Sniffins Lane. Move, we take it off the agenda. <clears throat> okay, discussion. Oh, second. Second. Sorry. second. All in favor? Aye. Five zero. Okay, discussion. Motion, no, you need a motion first. Motion to approve. Anybody second that? I'll second it. Okay, all in. I guess all in favor, right? We don't need to discuss that. I think he's okay. All in favor? Of what? We, Approving it? Yeah. Okay. I, I'll, Aye. Can we do that? Aye. No, we really can't. Yeah, we have to do discussion. Sorry. Does anybody have discussion? To prove it. We're, we're, we're down to, we're down to Sniffin's Lane. We're down to Sniff. The Marina. We're down to Sniffin's Lane. We're doing Sniffin's Lane. But let's let's do let's do Jay's hard work right and make sure that we include Jay's planning of over. Uh, no. Mr. Chairman, at your direction, I'd be happy to read in the suggested conditions of approval for the commission's Thank consideration. Um, so they are uh, the recommended conditions of approval in my memo dated January fourth, twenty twenty four, items one through six. Uh, the applicant shall obtain a letter from a licensed engineer ensuring the project's compliance with the town of Stratford's MS4 stormwater permit. This letter shall be delivered and emailed to the, or emailed to the Office of Planning and Zoning and kept in the applicant's special case file. Number two, all recommendations made by the Architectural Review Board in their memo 12-15-23 shall be strictly followed. Uh, number three, uh, similar to previous applications and approvals for like uses, locations, and given the high leverage location with public access to the waterfront, the applicant shall commission a mural represent representative of the subject location, images only, not business advertisements, on the north or east elevations uh, as the large building facade offers an opportunity for placemaking and celebrating Stratford's waterfront. That's what we did with 50 Housatonic. Um, the applicant shall install a solid six-foot fence and, or appropriate vegetative screening along the property line that abuts 520 Sniffins Lane. Uh, the applicant shall receive a letter from the conservation superintendent that they are satisfied with the proposed planting selection. Number six, all necessary siltation and erosion control shall be in place and the zoning enforcement officer notified for an inspection prior to any site construction work being performed. And the last one that I heard in the testimony tonight was that uh, all recommendations made by the town engineer in his memo uh, 1 January 18th, 2024, shall be included in the plan. I'll amend my motion to include all of Jay's recent comments. The seconder has got to accept it. Second. Not, yes, I'm gonna make, I, I was going to raise the issue of the fence around there because coastal regulations are not really going to allow a six-foot fence, but 
the way I have it worded allows them to change that to vegetation if it run, they run into a problem with deep. They, they, ran, they, they said they ran into a security problem. So we've but given them an out for both, I believe. Okay. The way we're wording that. All right. And we're covered with engineering, all of their permit. Do we need to add anything for that? I just recommend that you, you include the recommendations oh, made by oh, the yeah. town engineer in his memo dated January 18th, 2024. Just say uh, uh, that's Casey's engineering report oh, for to include his recommendations. Okay. Of course, unfortunately. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Anybody want to comment? Can we do that? All right. We're fine. Then all in favor. Aye. 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 Okay, shoot. Next. No, no, we have to do a vote. And we, the, no, no, we're going to no, we were we're going to do a name vote. Ewa. Aye. Aye. Deborah. Aye. Lenny. Aye again. Myself. Aye. We're all. It's. We're all. Okay. I zero. agree. I agree. That's how you just. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. What else do we have to do here? Move. I'm losing all my paperwork, so I know I'm. Are we moving ahead. along here? Yeah, what's our next? Our okay, next move we take 526 S Avenue zone change, 526 S Avenue SPR off the table, and the text amendment 29. Second. Okay, our text amendment. No, they, they have to be separate votes. I move that we. Yeah. Well, that is correct. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we should take each one of these. Sep and vote on each one of them separately. Well, the we did the first one. All right, move that we approve the text amendment number 29. I'm going to first ask Jay to. Okay, anybody second? Okay, second it. Jay, how are we in terms of, of this text amendment? Are we? He accepted, it sounded like he accepted everything that you, that was on your list. So theoretically, your text amendment is in pretty good shape. I believe so, Mr. Chairman. I think the only item that was not changed directly was all the amendments have been made to the text amendment, and theirs submitted to us April 12th, which you all received. I believe all amendments have been made to the site plan as well, so that, um, and the only change they didn't make was some wording on maybe one of the headings, which I'm okay leaving it as it is. It's okay. Um, so I would say that I have no recommended changes to the proposed text amendment. I would condition it as, as submitted to the Planning and Zoning Office, date stamped April 12th, 2024, because we received, you all received four versions of this. We want to make sure that we are all looking at the right one. April 12th, 2024. Including his affirmative response to your questions. Including his testimony. So that's the only thing that I would put in there is that he, is, he, he affirmed Jay's memo of what needed to go into the text, all the elements of it. Yeah, we're gonna, but we're gonna put that into the record. That's all we're gonna do is say, go back to Jay's administrative notes. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, allow me to uh, ask a question to Jay. Go. Uh, if Jay could uh, refresh my memory, my memory on why 37 unit in Stratford changed to 32. So uh, based on my comments, what was it, two months ago, I, I, the, at the last meeting, they were proposing a 45-unit development mm -hmm. 
they didn't have the parking spaces for that. They didn't, they didn't have everything they needed in order to support that, that many units. So they lowered the total density down to 40. There are 32 in Stratford and eight in Bridgeport. I don't even care how many are in Bridgeport. There are, th there are 32 in Stratford. And that's what we are, that's what you all are considering. So 32 total units. So it's all changed because I, the, I see uh, 47 total. It may have been 47. It, 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 like I said, this application has changed four times since it was submitted. So it's, it's difficult to keep track of it. What I can tell you is that the, the, the difference is five units now. So it was 37 in the original application. And then when they reduced it by five, it went from 37 now to 32. I'm just worried about the tax advantage uh, for, for Stratford, not in Bushport. I don't care about Bushport. Yeah. If it were 37, that means we are, we are in advantage in tax. And if that goes to, uh, if 37 minus 47, that means they, have, they, they, they give more to Bushport than Stratford. I have 47 here, it doesn't change. So 37 minus 32, that's what, 15 as opposed to 12. There's eight in Bridgeport, 32. Where is it, where, where that eight from? from? All the affordable units will be in Stratford. Stratford will be taking, will, will be the recipient of all the affordable units. Bridgeport, Bridgeport has reached their affordable max 50 years ago. Okay, we are we in argument. Linda, sir. Roll call. Roll call. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Yes. We got the six zone changes next, right? Move that we take the zone change for 520 Success Avenue off the table. Second. Yes. Second. Second. All right, let's take a vote to take it off the table. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move that we approve the zone change for 520 Success Avenue. Second. Second. Anybody? No, do roll call. Okay, roll call. Roll call vote. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay, move that we take 520 Success Avenue, SPR off the table. Yes. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Second. Only raise yes. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Roll call. Take it off the table. What's that? Yeah, you do. Oh, you're right. Motion to approve. No. What? Listen to him. Well, you can have discussion after motion to approve. You can still discuss it. I need a second. Second. Right. Motion to approve. Get a second. Then you can talk about it. Second. 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 Do, do we? I didn't think we did. Jay? I mean, you can ask for it. I don't we'll know if I do it. But. That's all. Jay would know. I, I heard someone say you can ask okay. for it. Right. And the applicant, by statute, is always allowed to come back to say, hey, look, we made every effort to try to modify this. We just can't sacrifice the two parking spaces to do it. And so they were at 85%. Yeah. 
So if you conditioned that they bring the maximum impervious area down to 85% and they can do it great, they don't have to spend time and money to come back, they may find out that they can't make that work, then they have to come back to us and say, hey, we can't meet that condition, and you all say, all right, well, thank you for trying. Maybe they can. Maybe they can. Yeah, all we have to be asking, that's all. Oh, we need to ask. I think you can condition it on that green space. And I think, my, as I heard the testimony, the engineer said they had five extra spaces based on getting that new property. So it seems like it would be a doable thing. If they want to come back to the, on an HS30G, they can come back to the commission anyway for a modification if they so desire it. So I would put it on as a condition and then um, if they want to come back, you know, they can come back without appealing or anything like that, you know. I'm going to withdraw my motion because I'm not going to include that. I'm not going to include that. I don't think they have to do it. We need 20%. Motion to approve with the um, stipulation that it's 80% impervious. Second. Plus Jay's conditions. Plus Jay's con conditions, yes. Yes, please. Consider. And you can follow along on page five of my staff comments. No site, condition number one, no site work or construction activity may commence without conditions of approval. Number two, three, I'm gonna omit number four, unless you all would like that, that's the impervious area. Number, I'm on page five, towards the bottom. Construction activity until conditions of approval number two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eleven have been satisfied, and the required permits have been approved by the town. That's typical, typical conditions that we would require prior to applying for a building permit. All suggested revisions to the text amendment provided by the, in the planning and zoning administrator's memo uh, shall be implemented and as agreed at the meeting this evening by the applicant. The, number three, the applicant shall submit revised plans to the Office of Planning and Zoning reflecting the zone development table with the correct base zone. They have done this. Number four, the applicant shall reduce the impervious area down to 80%. This should be reflected on the revised plan. The applicant shall obtain a letter from a licensed engineer ensuring the project's compliance with the town's MS4 stormwater permit, and this letter shall be delivered to the Office of Planning and Zoning and kept on file. The applicant shall, shall receive a letter from the conservation superintendent that they are satisfied with the proposed planting plan. Number seven, all necessary siltation and erosion control shall be in place and the zoning enforcement officer notified for an inspection prior to any site or construction, site work or construction work being performed. Bicycle racks that can hold up to 10 bicycles shall be installed on site. The applicant shall install two electric vehicle charging stations to accommodate changing preferences in motor vehicles. Number 10, the, the proposed parking area need, shall be repaved and striped. Number 11, there shall be no, con no storage of construction debris, materials, bottles, shipping containers, abandoned and unregistered motor vehicles or items deemed to be similar in nature on the site. All, all above mentioned blighted conditions shall be cleaned up prior to the issuance of a building permit. Last, number 12, all razor wire on site shall be removed. Those are my recommended conditions. We're telling them they have to install two charging stations on Success Avenue? 
at $50,000 a piece? You also have to look at the location, too, where it's going to be. I mean, you really think there's a lot of people driving Teslas over there? Look, I, I'm just making suggestions. I'm not offended if you all don't see. However, it's not all 830G, it's just a percentage. Right, but not everybody's going to be 830G. It's going to be other people paying full price. Are you allowed, can you do that with an 830G development? Tell them they have to put charging stations in? We have currently Jay's list of stipulations and the 20%, the 20 which is actually in Jay's list. Yeah, so we don't, need to, okay. we don't need to have that 20%. Okay. If, we, if we accept Jay's list, then it's all there. <laughs> Let's get over the hurdle of Lenny not wanting uh, charging stations. So they're going to come back and they're going to say we can't afford them. And then Jay's going to have to be stuck with it saying, okay, <laughs> am I correct? <laughs> yeah, well, the applicant Oof. comes back at no cost and says, you know, we've, we've evaluated the requirement and based on A, B, and C, we're going to put in five. Or we can't put in any. Whatever they do, you know, I'm just, what, so you know what? I think, I think, I think I think the commission's responsibility is to try to get the best project out of it, and if they can't do it, then they can. They complained about bicycle racks, so. I, I, I think we are, we are addressing, we're not just addressing the, and what's happening now. We talk about the future also. I'm addressing the location, and are the charging stations really necessary? Anyone there? can. We turn down charging stations right. at the dock shopping center. That's a different situation. All right. Let, so, because this is getting out of here. Okay. Come to Stratford and install zoning charging stations everywhere. I thought I seconded. You did. Deborah. So, yeah, ready for a vote. So, we're ready for a vote. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Roll call. No, we're doing with Lindy's. That's right. Ewald. Aye. <laughs> Linda. Mm -hmm. Aye. Deborah. She Did said aye. Say aye? Just say aye, yeah. Lenny. Aye. <laughs> Harold, aye. Five zero. Correct? Yep. Correct. Okay. What else do we have here? Um, we have the site. We We're going to table Bluebird, but I, I have a request. Can we deal with this at the beginning of May instead of making the petitioner wait till the end of May? It all depends whether you want to come in for a special meeting. That's fine. Will Mr. Kelly have it done by then? I can't speak for him. Two weeks. The I can't. 
the applicant doesn't need to be here. The, the public hearing is closed. We right, right. We can just come. End of the meeting. We can come here for five minutes if it's ready. Just so he doesn't have to wait till the end of the month. He, he just has to advertise. He doesn't even have to meet at, we but don't he, even have to meet at six o'clock. He, ha he has to advertise. We can meet at four. No, no, he has to advertise it. <laughs> right. But well, that's, that's Kelly's okay. got to get it done. So it's all rested on him. It's rested on the town administration once again. Could Motion to adjourn. Do we have anything else, Jay? Uh, uh, our next meeting is on the 12th, it's not Please, four weeks. Okay. Me off the We're week. not done yet. Shh. Let's go. We've got to keep going. <coughs> go ahead. So, just to address Commissioner Petroselli's question, I will work with, with Town Attorney Kelly and do, sh short of writing it myself, I will do my best to make it sure might, it that might it be is a good idea if you do that. That is, just have him sign you. it. I didn't finish. Goodness. That it is before Excuse you. Excuse me, I'm talking. Don't interrupt me. It's finished. Let him finish. We're going to tell you the thing. I want Don't to hear interrupt you. me. No, do not interrupt him. Hey, both of you, cool it. Jesus. Let him continue. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll make every effort to make sure you have it, the, the modified agreement before you, before you, the next time you vote. Okay. That yeah. works. That was simple. So put down on your calendars. Right now it's scheduled at 5, at May the 8th is the date that we have for our administrative meeting if we need one. We could even make it early if you want, make it a special meeting because nobody's going to be here, right? It depends on who's going to be here. Make it a special meeting with one item on the agenda. You could have it if no, but she has to come home from work. Right, Deborah? Yeah, um, what time? Sure yeah, what time could you be here? Family. Let's make sure I can get the is space. It here? Oh, she said she could be here for five if we no, want. No, this room is booked. In Lent's in here. But we don't have to be in here. We have let's to make feed. sure I can oh, get so the document don't. before you. Yeah, let's not do it. The time in the room. Okay, so all we're going to do right now is vote on leaving on the table for right now, correct? Yes. Okay, we don't need to discuss that. Mm -hmm. We've already discussed it. Yeah. Yeah. Discuss it. So do we need to? Okay, so we are not voting. We don't need to do anything. Okay, let's go to the approval of minutes. Okay. Motion to amend the minutes. Uh, Linda was not. Linda. Uh, <laughs> she recused herself. She did not vote. And, and Rich, Rich Fredette Rich Rich voted. voted. Yes. Okay, second anybody? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Okay, there is no administrative site plan review. There is a CAM review for Sniffins Lane. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So as discussed at the meeting this evening, uh, there were some um, derelict structures in the water, which I believe, which I know now there is a plan to get that issue resolved. So uh, my recommended condition of approval is that the applicant uh, satisfy, no, resolve any enforcement issues, outstanding enforcement issues with DEEP. Um, so moved. And Are you done? Those go on. And I should. Okay. And I should. We did receive did a letter from the Waterfront Harbor Management Commission as well. The commission finds that the proposed project is consistent with the harbor management plan, including the plan's policies to encourage and support water dependent uses, provided that the required site remediation plans are approved by DEEP. Uh, appropriate site development best management practices are included and to ensure no adverse impacts on, on environmental quality, including water quality in the harbor management area during construction and operation. Number three, that all materials and fluids associated with the proposed business operation be properly contained on site and disposed of properly. And number four, the project meets all town requirements for stormwater management and complies with the applicable FEMA requirements for coastal construction. And my second condition is that we include those recommendations given by the Waterfront Harbor Management Commission, which are all sound recommendations. So moved, including all Jay's recommendations. And the Waterfront Commission. Well, yeah, he, he said that. Second. Second. Discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, let, let do roll call. No, not in this one. Okay. We don't? It's a 30,000 square foot facility. Okay. All right, next. 
uh, sediment control application, which basically you just read the memo about it. But. And so we, I'm going to recommend, uh, Mr. Chairman, that we attach our standard four conditions of approval for erosion and sediment control. One being that the erosion and sediment controls design and implementation shall comply with the 2002 Connecticut guidelines for soil erosion and sediment control. Number two, all necessary siltation and erosion control shall be in place and the zoning enforcement officer notified for an inspection prior to any site work or construction work being performed. Number three, immediate on-site modification shall be employed when an erosion problem develops. And lastly, number four, in evaluating this application, the commission has relied on information provided by the applicant, and if such information su subsequently proves to be inaccurate or incomplete, this approval may be modified, suspended, or rescinded. That's all I have. Motion to approve, with uh, including Jay's stipulations. Second, anybody? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Roll call? We don't need a roll call. No. Okay. Um, what else do we have here? We have no zoning enforcement. Nothing else. The only thing we need to, I need to remind you is to keep an eye in your emails for the next meeting, administrative meeting, Wednesday, 5-8. It will be a short one because it's only that one vote. Yeah. Correct? Is that your opinion? Yeah. Thank you. Assuming that we're ready for we have the, the documentation for you all to review prior. Yes. Thank you. We actually got a lot done. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.